And everybody was basically living their life, getting money. I mean, good money. So at the height of your career, how much you, would you say was the most you ever made? I done seen 50,000, I done seen 100,000 within a week, you know. 50,000 a week? Yeah. On a consistent basis? On a consistent basis. Money conversations, we've been making business moves. Contemplating how to get it, need to get in tune. Different topics, we got options, you can pick and choose. If more income ain't the outcome, gotta switch the mood. We tryna help you to improve, thanks for asking. Road the riches, speak on broker days and past tense. Wealthy habits, lately I just wanna stack chips. Took a risk and we've been running up a bag since. G Vast Quest, quick to make a couple G's. Detox, spin knowledge, put you on your feet. Bug out, got the plate, make sure to pray before you eat. At the table, with the winners, come and take a seat. I would introduce this gentleman. He was in the game in Queens for a long time, but uh, I want him to introduce himself, and, and, and I'm eager to hear his story at this point in time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm the OG Just. I came up in the game a long time. I'm 67 years old. So a lot of people y'all heard about or been about, I was around. I lived the life for a long time. I did a lot of things that I don't feel good about. But as I got older, I backed away from. But uh, anything you want to ask me about certain people, ask me. And I'll tell you from what I know. You understand what I'm saying? Any questions? Uh, yeah, we got a lot of questions, actually. So, where, you, where did you grow up at? Right here in Southside, Jamaica, Queens. Right here on Sutton Boulevard and 116th Road. Okay. Um, so, what was your childhood like? Like, what was, your, what was the household like? Was it, you grew up with two parents? One? Well, I grew up with a mother two brothers, a younger, and a younger sister, and a stepfather. Basically the normal childhood, you know, but like a lot of us in South Jamaica, we got caught up in the streets, you know? And um, unfortunately, I lost my brothers, both of them. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. I lost my sister. I lost While you my was a mother. kid? No, as I grew older. All right, so before we get to that, uh -huh. how did somebody who comes from a normal family get tied up with uh, selling drugs and things of that nature? The lifestyle. You know, wanting to have the, the, the jewelry, the clothes, the cars. You know, just be out there, you know? And you get pulled in. Mm -hmm. You get pulled in. So how did you get pulled in? Well, I grew up, and it was a white guy, believe it or not, in this neighborhood. We called them white folks. That's how it always start, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you hear some shit like that white folk it's, yeah. it's not good <laughs> he started selling drugs in Harlem he was selling drugs in Harlem believe it or not and, and he I, was older than you uh, two years older than me and how old was you at this time I think I was 18 and he was 20 and he was selling drugs on 116th street and 8th avenue believe it or not mm. with Nicky Barnes and all of them and so he, what year was this this was in 1974. Okay. Yeah. 1974. And uh, he happened to take me uptown, me and another friend of mine, which was a year younger than me. And, oh, man, I never saw nothing like it. I mean, 16th Street in Harlem, between 8th and Manhattan Avenue, man, it'd be two, three hundred people on one block and everybody getting money. Everybody. Everybody. Two, three hundred hustlers? Or, or, hustlers. Yeah. Hustlers. And a thousand customers. You know? Yeah. And back then they were selling 
what they call quarters, $55, $60 quarter bags of drugs, dope, heroin. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they was 60, you made $10. If they was 55, you made $5. Mm. Well, we you would sell a thousand of them a day. A thousand in no time, like this. God damn. <clears throat> and we was clicking money. And then white folks, he was always a thinker. Mm -hmm. He said, listen, they giving me all this. Let me break it down and take this out of that. And what, you... What and, is this out of that? In other words, out of the quarters, there was 10 spoons. He would take a spoon out. A spoon is a... A uh, one-fourth teaspoon. Of, of heroin. Heroin. And well, I, I'm, from, I'm from... I was born in the 80s, so uh, when you talk in 70s talk, yeah, it's going yeah, through... Yeah. I don't know what you're back talking then, about. Back then, it so. wasn't scales. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't scales back okay. then. It was the spoons. It was the spoons. <laughs> and we started breaking them down and bringing them out here to Queens selling dimes. Mm. And still taking what was left back up to Harlem selling quarters. God damn. And we was killing them. We was, we was killing them. At that point, how much was you making a night? Wow. Three, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. That was a lot then. Back then in the 74. That was a whole lot of money. Yeah. yeah, that was a whole lot of money. You know? So what was that like? What, what, walk me through that feeling. Like, you got it, it the was first a feeling, time you get like a, 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 a thousand rush. in your hands. You know it was saying? a what rush. It was a rush. Mm -hmm. We go into all the clubs, like the well-known clubs mm -hmm. back then. Nell Gwen's, Third World Gallery. Rooftop, riverboat, you know? We mm. was the lime life kids. You know, wearing the best clothes, the best jewelry. You know, we was them guys back then. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And it was just a rush. It was just a rush, you know? And unfortunately, white folks got murdered. Yeah. Because somebody accused them of stealing something that he never did. And they wound up shooting him up there on Manhattan Avenue and 116th Street. And he died from his wounds. But prior to that, when all this jumped off, he backed away from the drug game. And he had an uncle called Carlton Raleigh. Mm -hmm. And his uncle was a number banker. And he started us with numbers. We started our own number bank. In, in Harlem or here? In Queens. Yeah. Wow. Running from house to house, collecting numbers. How did you get into that? You were selling drugs a second ago. Exactly, because they accused him of stealing something, and mm -hmm. he, he was afraid it was going to get ah. crazy. Okay. So he tried to back away from it. So we did that for about the whole winter of 74. And we made a lot of money. Yeah. And then he got tired and he said, man, I'm going back to Harlem because this money ain't nothing to do with like the drug game. It was, oh, so it was less money than the, than the drug. So how much was you pulling there? A day back yeah. then, maybe $200, $100. You know, it was numbers. Yeah. And we was only taking single actions. So it was only like dollars, two dollars, three dollars, like that. Mm -hmm. You know, a big difference from selling dime bags and fifty dollar quarters and sixty dollar quarters is a big difference. Okay. So he went back to Harlem, and that's what happened. Unfortunately, he got murdered. He got murdered too. Ah, cause yeah. of that. Because mm. they claimed that he stole some drugs, which he never did. Mm -hmm. White folks, uncle. White folks. White folks. And his uncle, not his uncle. White folks. Okay. You know? So when he got murdered, we was up in the air. But we had met so many people up in Harlem yeah. that people wanted to give us yeah. drugs. Mm. 
So I took some drugs from other people. My other man took drugs from other people, and we still was coming out here doing our thing. Mm. But we left Harlem alone. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? And it was good. It was life was good, man. You know how many? How many? So you never you never went to jail or nothing? Like yes, you? I did. I did. I went to jail quite a few times. I didn't did. I'm talking about during that stint when I say that. Well, yeah, I did. In '77, I did two and a half years. Mm-hmm. Came home. '81, I did another two years. Came home. '88. I went back, mm-hmm. came home. 92, I went back, came home. Oh, damn. So I done did quite a few mm-hmm. state prison bids. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, you can research that. And all. Uh, and in the research, you just said it. Yeah, so. but. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll throw that up there. If but I, yeah. in, in between there. Yeah. I still stayed with the drugs. Mm-hmm. Now, meanwhile, my younger brother got in the game. Yeah. My other younger brother went to prison for a long stretch because he had a murder charge. And he did like nine years oh, for murder. But the younger one, he, he got in the game and he blew up. Mm-hmm. He blew up. Buying cars and houses and things of that. That's how I got introduced in it with Fat Cat uh, and Supreme. Now, this is the good stuff. How, you know, and Queen. Supreme. I want to know about Queen. And Supreme. And Supreme. Who, who did you meet first? I met him around the same time. Truthfully, because Fat Cat was a gang member. Mm-hmm. What was that? Um, what was the name of that gang? Seven Crowns. Seven Crowns. Right. And Supreme was a five percent, which I am a part of. Okay. You know, God. The body. nation of gods and earths and all. Right. That. Okay. So, and me and my brothers was gods. Mm-hmm. You know, so we all started around the same time. But my brother got with Fat Cat and them first. Mm-hmm. And he started making a lot of money. A lot of money. A lot of money. I came home from jail. He had new car, you know, house, jewelry, the clothes, everything. Mm-hmm. And he pulled me in. The first day he brought me out there, he said, yo, I'm going to give you something. But when you get out this car with this and you say the name, people going to run up on you. Mm. And I didn't believe him. When I get out the car and I said, best bet, that was the name of the work. Okay. Man, so many people ran up to me with money. I couldn't believe it. Talking about fiends and shit like that. Fiends. Mm. I couldn't believe it. That shit scared me. It scared me. And this was what? 1981. Mm. Right? And I'm so scared because there's money coming from everywhere. Wow. And it was so funny because this girl came up to me, and that's around when I first started, huh? The mask. Yeah. Just pull it down. No, pull it down a little bit so it can be clear. Okay. This girl came up to me. And that was the first time I heard about AIDS. Mm -hmm. And we knew she was sick. And she gave me some money. And my brother was laughing at me because I I, I was tucking my lips. (laughs) And I took the money like this. (laughs) And I went and bought a bottle of alcohol and poured it all over my hands and the money. This is how scared I was back then. And he was laughing at me. He was like, look at you. Look at you, man. He said, man, money ain't going to kill you. <laughs> the cause of money going to kill you. So when you got out and you were selling, yeah. when you first said uh, the name of what you had, yeah. 
how much was you making then a night? Whew. About fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a night. A night, easy. And you, how how many days you was out there? Every day, <laughs> <laughs> every goddamn day. I'm telling you, tax free. Man, I was getting so much money it scared me. Hmm. I didn't know what to do with it. I said, "Yo, you getting this kind of money?" He said, "Man, I've been getting this kind of money, my brother." He was getting so much money, he bought a brand new Mercedes Benz, you know? Yeah. He had a brand new 98 then. That's when everybody's wearing 98 Oldsmobile mm-hmm. with the true spokes and Vogue tires and all that. Yeah. Then he got the Mercedes, you know? And this shit scared me. I couldn't believe a person could make that kind of money. And then I saw a fat cat go from nothing to something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You know, I couldn't believe it. You know, we going to parties and throwing parties. You know? So you worked in in his organization or you just was? I was in his organization at that time. You know, well, back then, everybody was getting work from them. That's a picture of a party we threw when all the bosses was there, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know if they could see that. Oh, you're going to try to put it on the camera. Hold up. Fat Cat Supreme Team. I'm over in the corner with the beige suit on, you know? I had a BMW back then. You know, that's Fat Cat with the sailor hat on. That's Corley, oh, yeah, James Ward Corley with the white suit on. And Supreme Team, Supreme was there with a white suit on. Mm. You know, this was all the bosses back then. This was all the bosses, you know. And uh, that night was a, 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 a. This was before he went to jail the first time, right? Yeah. Way before. No, he had been to jail before then. But this is when he came home and got buddy. Mm-hmm. And um, what kind of dude was he like to you? Always. Cat was always a good dude. Always. Always. What about Preem and, and Prince? Same thing. Same thing. Well, Prince wasn't nobody back then. Prince had went to jail. Mm-hmm. You know? And, uh, Preem was getting the money then. Princeton started getting money till after he came home. You know? Yeah. And then he, he turned into a different dude. You know? No, after, I don't know. Explain well, it to me. <laughs> before he went to do jail, he was just a booster. He used to steal clothes out of yeah. stores. Yeah. And stuff. And then he came home and Preem put him on. Because Preem was getting ready to go to jail. Mm -hmm. Then he so-called took over. And I don't know if it's ego, but he just turned it into a more vicious game. In other words, it was his way or no way. And it wasn't fun at that time no more. Uh, Nah, it wasn't. It started getting crazy. How did that change for you in, in your dealings? It changed because now the drug game was starting to change because that's when crack started coming out. See, it wasn't crack. It was heroin and cocaine. Mm -hmm. Then it was smooth. It was smooth. But once the crack came into play, then people start ending up getting killed and shot and robbed and this and that. It just changed the game. You, You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. No, and, I, I remember. I don't remember crack like you know before and after, but when it came, nuts. when that came into play, man, because I got caught up into that. In what way? What do you mean? Well, I was smoking crack and all of that. Okay. And it changed my life. I went to from owning a house with a wife, kids, everything, to losing everything, losing my wife my family, 
house, everything. Mm. They moved to Texas to get away from me. And, yeah. and then, you know, I had a tragic accident where I started running around with a stick-up kid. Mm -hmm. And then I get shot up. Damn, how many Real times? bad. I got shot seven times in 85. Left for dead. You know? Yeah. And it took me like six months to recover from that. Six and a half months to be as that. Mm -hmm. And after that, life took a, a change. Did you like, ever, um, after that, was that the time when you got clean? Or was, it, was that like that type of moment? Or no? I got clean after I went to prison. After that. And that's when everything changed and I got back to me. What you went to prison for? I went to prison for selling drugs, getting mm -hmm. high, smoking crack, but selling drugs too. Mm -hmm. But after I went to jail, that was in 88. It was like I had an awakening, mm -hmm. you know? And while I was away, one of my brothers got murdered. The one that put you on? No. The other one that I chose yet did time for murder. Okay. He came home getting money with Supreme yeah. and Cat. But he was more with Supreme, I would say. Then he got caught up in some hearsay. And he got murdered. So let me ask you something. Do you remember the time when when Pappy Mason and them? Of course. Do, do you Pappy the one you... saved my life when I got shot up. It was his crew that shot me. And he just happened to pull up when they was getting ready to kill me. And they had mm -hmm. the guns to my head. And he recognized me. And he was like, oh, my God, no, 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 no. This is the wrong man. Y'all shot the wrong dude. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. And he called my brother, which was the one that got killed, and tried to explain to him it was an accident. And my brother was like, listen, I don't care what it was. He said, if my brother dead? He was like, no, nah, he's not dead, but he bad. He said, well, if my brother died, man, you know what's going to happen. It's a war. Mm. You understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, But thank by the grace of God, I pulled through that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then he got caught up in some bullshit with Cat. So, um, so when that happened, well, so now that we established that you and Pat has a relation, has a, a decent relationship. Yeah, we had a good relationship because um, we was in prison together, you know? So I knew him prior to the, the streets. And he was never, he was never really a drug dude. He was more enforcer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. In the drug game. Yeah. So when he came home, seeing all the money he can make, yeah. That shit went to his head. He was like, oh, shit. Yeah. He from Brooklyn. Do or die. You know. Yeah. You know how they are. He come out here to Queens and see dudes getting money. It ain't about all that butch kid shit. And that, you know. Damn, he said, I can get rich out here. Which was true. And he started getting money. You know. Mm. He put his own crew together. It was called the Bebos. Yeah, you know? Yeah. That day yeah. he was in 40. They was in yeah, project. Exactly. You know? So it was a lot going on back then. You know? You had you had a few families. You had Cat and us. You had the Bebos. You had the Corleys. You had the Preem team. You know, you had crews. You had Tommy Montana. And what and crew was you in? I was with. My brother, civilized. 
That's the name of your, that was the name yeah, of your crew? Yeah, yeah. My brother Civilized. He had his own mom, you know? Mm. And everybody was basically living their life, getting money. I mean, good money. So at the height of your career, how much, uh, how much would you say was the, uh, the most you ever made? Ooh, I done seen 50,000. I done seen 100,000. A night? No, within a week, you know. 50,000 a week? Yeah. On a consistent basis? On a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. This was in the early 80s, mm -hmm. you know, from like 81 to like 85. It was a lot of money being made. A lot of money being made. You know, if you see the picture, we was wearing suits, driving foreign cars, living a life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was nothing we wanted for. We had houses, wives, kids, everything. It was like the American dream. You, you understand what I'm saying? But... When the crack came into play, it changed a lot of that. How so? How, from your viewpoint, like what was different? Like, how... because people that wasn't smoking or getting high started getting high and smoking. What was it? What made everybody use it? Well, was everybody on coke? They just didn't do what crack did. Exactly. Coke was a different high than crack was a, a exceptional high. Hmm. And once you took that first hit, you was off and running. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We started out free basing. You understand what I'm saying? And it wasn't as bad then, but it was bad. You ready? Oh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he tried to get out the chair. That's what he yeah. tried to get out oh. the hot seat and shit. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just crazy, man. That shit... It took people from up here to down here. I seen, I say nigga rich people like this fall down to like nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I never saw that happen before. Even in the 60s and the 70s, I never saw a drug do that to people. I never. And it still to this day it amazed me the way it happened so fast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What did your wife and stuff think of that? She couldn't handle it. Hmm. Because she didn't want the kid around me. Yeah. It's like we went for wearing minks and driving cars and living a life to me sneaking out the house and me taking money from here and taking money from there and doing this and, you know, it's just, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. And I didn't blame her yeah. for leaving me. That relationship never recovered from that. Mm. You know? So yeah. even in the height, she wasn't approving of it. No. Not at all, you know? She wound up leaving me and living her life and getting married again and, you know, and my son was seven at the time and I haven't spent no time in his life since then. It had to be painful. Very painful to this day, you know? You 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 still haven't spoken to them. Well, I speak to them. I haven't spoken to, to her. Yeah, but I speak to him. And how did he feel about it? Hurt, because he didn't understand what had happened. Only from her viewpoint. Mm -hmm. But he still respect me as being his dad. Was that later? That wasn't... This is he later wasn't, he after, wasn't mad at you at no point? Yes, he was. But after I explained to him, mm -hmm. he kind of understood. But he, he was like, well, you could have still been there. And I was trying to explain to him that I couldn't. 
because I didn't know how to be a father after that. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So that's messed me up mentally. It just mess, you know, it tore families apart, you know? And a lot of these kids today is repercussion of that. Yeah. That's why a lot of them are the way they are. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I don't blame that on them. I blame it on us. Because if we was there like we were supposed to, it wouldn't happen. You understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. I was a good father growing up. Spending time with my sons, going places, showing them things, teaching them things. And then you went from there to nothing. Not wanting to be around him, not wanting to spend time with him, not wanting him to see you in the predicament you're in. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And it just, oh man, I can't even explain, man. It hurts to this day. Yeah. That I cannot go back and change that. Because once you made that mistake, there's no going back. Yeah. You could only go forward. And hoping while going forward, you learned something and you could change the future. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, he's a grown man now. He is in 40s. Mm. So how much can I change? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And that's your only, that was your only... Child? No, I have another one up in Harlem. Same thing. Yeah, around the same me time? and this, well, two years prior. Mm-hmm. But me and his mother was never really a couple. Mm. I was there as far as looking out. Yeah. But spending time with him, and I never did that. How's that relationship? Plus, he had. He has a mental illness. He has Down syndrome. Mm. You know? So he don't understand that. He just look at me as daddy. That's my daddy. That's my daddy. You know? Yeah. It's just, it messed so many people and families and lives up. That crack era. Like I tell you, people are still trying to bounce back from that. It's no bouncing back. You can only go forward and hope that you changed enough that you can know why and explain why and try to tell them why and hope they understand it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's see. Is there any, any, is there anything well, I, I take it, you know, you missing your children. Is there any other regrets that you had, like, you yeah, know, like doing it at all? Or Yeah, because, like I told you, in the process of that, I lost my whole family. Mm. Both my brothers is gone. My younger sister is gone. How did she die? She died know? from an amorism Ooh. at, at uh, 60, 59 years old, mm. you know. But she had a rough life, too, with drugs. Mm. Then my mother, she passed from Alzheimer's. My my little brothers, they died from different stuff. You know, one got murdered, you know, with the fat cat thing. He got caught up with some bullshit. What was that? What was that? A situation? How did that? They, they claimed that he robbed him. That oh, guy that claimed one. he robbed him. He didn't. I don't know. We never talked about it. I never had a chance to talk because when he got killed, I was in jail. So how do you have a relationship with Fat Cat after he killed your brother? There's, there's no relationship because yeah. he's been in jail. 
That whole time? Since 85. So my brother got killed in 87. Mm. So there's a, I heard him say that if he could change anything he did, it would be that. Because we all grew up together. You know? Because his family from Alabama and my family is from Alabama. Mm. That's when we was kids. Who, Fat he, Cat? Yeah, he came to New York when he was 10. I came to New York when I was 10. You had the same age? No, I'm older. Oh. You know? But... Hmm. That's the history we got. Yeah. Our family votes from Birmingham, Alabama. You know? All right. Um, we, we appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, Bug, you got anything you wanted to say? No, we got a good one. Thank you. I appreciate y'all yeah. having me. Nice and uh, I you. hope somebody can get something out of this because... What would you want them to get? Information. Mm -hmm. Certain things need to be told and said. And especially about that epidemic, that crack epidemic. You know? Yeah. Because it's still going on. Yeah. It's just, unfortunately, there's still a lot of old people still doing it. But you got a lot of young people still doing it too. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I literally saw an Indian girl, no more than eighteen, in a box in the park, living in a box and smoking crack. Mm. Recently, or this was like this was the- yesterday. Oh man. Oh, man. You know? Yeah. So it's still a sickness. And it's still going on. Yeah. You go on Jamaica Avenue, it's it's crazy. A lot of white people from Long Island and everything running around smoking and shooting drugs and homeless. Oh, it's just it's an epidemic, man. Mm. It, it needs to change. It needs to stop. What, what, so you did it. So what you plan to do to help stop it? Oh yeah, I guess you know, tell you spread story. information. Mm. Try to just spread information. You know. Yeah. All right, man. Um, we don't want to keep you, and this barbershop got to close. So, thanks for asking us out. Thank you. I appreciate y'all having me, man. All right. For real. Later. You know?